Welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. I hope you're subscribed. I hope you've liked the video. If you do, please click the thumbs up and please share it where you can. Uh, please also consider becoming a patron as well and supporting the association to produce more of what we do. Uh, this video is a continuation of our uh, machine gun and mannequin series. So as we said before, uh, we're not uniform specialists as such. Uh, we don't collect uniforms and equipment unless it's directly to relate it to the Vickers machine gun. So what we've got is we've got a live mannequin for a change and we're continuing not only that mannequin series, but this is going to be part of the range finder training series as well, the range taker training. And just give you a little bit more of a study of the kit that, uh, that Private Riley is wearing in those training videos. So uh, take the camera off the stand in a moment and just give a once over of the kit, why it's being worn in the way it is, why it's potentially a little bit different from normal um, soldier equipment, normal infantry, because this is about the machine gun battalions, uh, and give you sort of just a little bit more info about how it would be worn in those machine gunner battalions. So top down, first of all, Mark II helmet, uh, standard sort of British Tommy helmet, nothing different here. Uh, you know, clearly works, doesn't it? Yep, yeah, good. Um, so you know, pretty standard uniform at the basic of it all. So in, in this case, we're wearing um, you know, austerity battle dress. Uh, our uniforms are reproduction. I think we've said about that before. We invest in the guns and the equipment for the guns rather than the uniforms that we'll wear and ruin. We've got a few original items. Uh, but let's say austerity battle dress at the base of it all, pretty typical. Because what we're portraying is the 1942 to 43 period British soldier in um, in the UK undergoing his training at the Machine Gun Training Centre, uh, either no, uh, number 24 Machine Gun Training Centre, uh, which was up at the Dale at Chester. So uh, what we're wearing is the uh, insignia of the Manchester Regiment. You know, these... these uh, white on red printed shoulder titles are uh, just coming in in that period i believe um maybe this yeah this is where we we blurred lines a little bit but we've got the manchester the red uh, the white on red there printed and then we've got a single arm of service strip meaning that it's infantry troops quite often you'll see one two or three of these uh being worn uh, de depending on which brigade the battalion is in but the machine gun battalions of which the manchester regiment provided some troops uh was just on its own it was a division divisional unit not in a brigade uh, so it just wears the single armor service strip we've got no divisional insignia here uh, because this chap isn't attached to a division yet he's still at his machine gun training center so what you see in the mgtc photos uh, and you'll see in our rangefinder training bids is that none of us have got divisional insignia on some of us have got uh, insignia below the armor service strip there's like battalion flashes uh, but in this case the manchester regiment didn't have that so uh, you know, sta standard equipment, standard uh, anklets, your know, web anklets here as well, and then the standard hobnail boots of the day. Uh, nothing, nothing particular, but it um, you know, does at least give us a, 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 a an opportunity to base everything else upon it. Now, while we've got uh, you know stood to the front here, you can just see the uh, the web equipment, which is sort of next layer up. Um, or well in between that you've got the, the respirator the general service respirator on the front of the chest there uh, can't have been easy actually doing a lot of the training for, for range finders with these or, or weapons in general anything that requires you to get into the prone position this must have got in the way quite a bit it certainly feels it when you go into the prone uh, wearing it you certainly recognize it but you say the web equipment we've got the cartridge carriers now these are empty uh, they're empty because it's training um, you know the, 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 and it isn't weapons training so empty pouches no need for anything full in here uh, but we, we've talked about these before we've talked about this in the 49th uh, div the raw ray photo analysis that we did each one of these pouches um, has has two pockets and in each of these pockets you have uh, two five round chargers for the for the lee enfield rifle now it's worth uh, and, and actually if you've only got one in there you can uh, pop it on this second uh, stud if you've got both in there you pop it on the, the, the top stud there uh, but each pouch then holds 20 rounds so with both pouches one pouch on the left one pouch on the right you've got a, a total of 40 rounds not much actually for for um uh, you know, a soldier to be carrying normally you'd be expecting 50 to 100 uh, but you know for for, for, for the 
your machine gun battalions, there's absolutely no need to be carrying huge amounts of ammunition. And they're not wearing basic pouches because they're rifle armed uh, and they are not carrying uh, Bren gun magazines. So there's no need for the, uh, for the uh, privates of a machine gun section to be carrying Bren gun mags. So they get these pouches, a bit easier to, to use. What I would say though, is that uh, once this chap becomes a fully trained range taker and moves into the field with his machine gun battalion, he's probably gonna change from a rifle to a machine carbine, so a Sten or a Thompson, in which case he'd be seen in the field with his basic pouches. And that's something we'll cover at a later date. And he ends up being one of the very, very few men in a machine gun battalion that has a machine carbine or a submachine gun in, in, common, in, in today's parlance. Uh, then, so uh, if you're about turn for me a minute, on the back, he's got a small pack, um, you know, carry, carrying you know, everything he needs. This is full, uh, which is quite a, an interesting point in training because once you've got a full small pack and nothing on the front, it's clearly back heavy. Uh, it starts to drag everything down because you can see uh, on, on here, you know, the, the, the small pack L straps are clipped into the top of the, the brace on the cartridge carriers. He's got no forward weight, everything's on the back. Um, and, and, and that is full because as, as you probably saw in, in our field training vids, yeah, we do end up the guys get their ground sheet type to lie on because it was pretty damp out there. Uh, we haven't, because the stage of the training at the moment is they're not carrying weapons, they're not in a field phase, uh, they're concentrating on carrying you know, the, rain, the range finder itself. Um, they're not carrying their rifles, they're not carrying bayonets, they're not carrying ammunition. So it makes it a little bit easier. So left hip, uh, bayonet, right hip, and is, is where we've got the water bottle. And these they are carrying because although you know, it, 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 we, we could be carrying bike bottles and stuff in the car, it's as easy to make sure that we've got some water um, with the guys all the time and it's very much up, uh, up to them. Uh, what we have got, if you just uh, right turn for a minute, what we have got on the side though, and you can see, is the rangefinder in its case. And, and hopefully you understand, and you've seen the videos about you know, putting this in its case. It's actually quite a weight, and it, it, um, it's quite a, an item to be carrying around. So you can understand why these guys end up with a machine carbine, uh, so that they don't have you know, the, the rangefinder there. Um, and this is one of the, this is the rangefinder with the number 14 stand in, its, um, in the case on the edge. Uh, strapped into it there rather than that number two stand which would have meant having the little leather pouch maybe we'll show you that in another vid um and another mannequin for for an er earlier earlier video at all so he's wearing there let's say the um the range finder as well um adjustable strap on that case not something we've covered in detail but that's at its fullest extent and that's where it sits you know uh mannequin six foot tall and yeah, that's still quite uh, quite something to be uh, to be carried there. You don't want to be carrying much else. Um, what else is there to mention? Just the fact that we are in training. Most of the photos that we found show you know no helmet nets or anything being put, worn in training at this point of the war. It's not battle school. They're not being taught field craft at this point. Uh, that comes later, or it's already happened in their recruit training and their machine gunner training. These guys in their range rangefinder training aren't wearing um, uh, helmet nets or any of those accoutrements because they're just getting in the field and being able to uh, you know, focus on rangefinders. So, you know, hopefully that's a, a quick once over of everything for you. I don't think there's anything really else to, else, um, to add. Maybe we'll see these guys. Uh, uh, we'll do another one of these once the guys are doing uh, the field craft training and things like that. Um, and observation and concealment because the range taker had to be skilled in that. But otherwise, we'll uh, you know, we'll stop it there, and you know, we'll uh, we'll save some of the detail for another day. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.